Welcome. Welcome to UCLA Extension Department of Business Management and Legal Programs video lecture series on entrepreneurship, new venture formation, and strategic business plan development. The video you are about to watch profiles or is an overview of the entire business plan development process. Now, even if you're not signed up in a course right now that is specifically on business plan development, we still use the sequence that we go through to develop a business plan to lecture on and to educate you on entrepreneurship as well as new venture formation. The same subject matters that are touched on in the process of developing a business plan are also the same subject matters that you'll see in the table of contents of any book on entrepreneurship or on how to start a business or a new venture formation. I'm Harry Redinger, your instructor. There are a total of 40 videos in our video lecture series that integrate with uh, UCLA Extension's online course management program, Canvas. Each video strives to be brief, but there is overlap between the videos to tie the curriculum together. Okay, let's get started. We start each of our uh, lectures off with final exam questions. I believe that if you're looking for questions and answers to questions as you go through the curriculum, you'll listen just a little bit more carefully and take a, a, a bit more, uh, uh, your notes will be a little bit more clear and diligent. So um, the very first question that may show up on our final exam, and by the way it does, is what are the three parts of a mission statement? So we'll, we'll go through this in just a bit, but it's what are we selling, to whom are we selling, and what makes us competitively different? Uh, the uh, next part of a <clears throat> of um, the next potential question is what is the objective of an industry analysis and that's the profile the g industry as a whole uh, on a entire na national basis and then uh, the third question is what is the objective of a market analysis and that's where we study the point of entry into the industry. The fourth potential question that could show up on the final exam, uh, and uh, this one, well this one doesn't real, uh, because it's so general and there's many questions that we'll have on the final exam that deal with strategy, but what is the objective of our competitive strategy? And so there's a lot that goes into understanding um, uh, how to answer that, that question and we have several videos that, that deal with that, this particular subject matter. So. <clears throat> What you're looking at right now is a diagram of the entire business plan development process and or the process of mastering the whole mindset of entrepreneurship or becoming an entrepreneur um, as well as what we have to go through sequentially to start a new business. So let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, in essence, each section or each box on this diagram up here represents a section in the business plan. And they're grouped by um, the front, in the front, the front end documents and company history. These sections of the business plan actually function as what we call the case study process. So the very beginning process of start of, of developing a business plan in itself can help us understand where we're going with the business uh, because of so much that has to align with the company history who and what who you are all about and where the business uh, is going so as we get into the subject matter of entrepreneurship new venture formation and strategic business plan development we'll be talking about from start to finish, it's all about alignment. It's all about alignment. But structurally, we can take this diagram and we can turn it vertically um, from the standpoint of like the structure of a building and the entire weight of the business plan or the concept and theory of the business uh, will funnel into, structural have lines that go into the company history. And that I think is one of the things that makes this course and this curriculum so special is because we're here to teach you on what entrepreneurism 
entrepreneurship is all about and and the steps to start a, a business but but we're also not only trying to build a business but we're also trying to build an entrepreneur within you so this job this 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 curriculum has much to do with the, the not only teaching but mentoring to give you tips on how to understand your life story so it can align with what you're trying to do as a business Everything starts with our mission statement. What are we selling, to whom we're selling, and what makes us competitively different? So let's take a look at each parts, the parts of a mission statement. First, we have to identify what are we selling. <clears throat> so what are we selling, and, um, and so this is where we have to actually define uh, with an SIC code, or an industry standard code, or a North America industry classification code, the product and or service that we're selling. So when we when we state a mission statement, XYZ company's mission statement, to provide, and this is where we have to identify the product or service. And, and when we do our, our industry and market analysis, we here we also have to look up and 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 find the SI, uh, the, uh, the first section of the business plan is the mission statement. It kind of is the rudder that, that uh, directs the direction of the entire business plan. So the mission statement is all about what we're selling, to whom we're selling, and what makes us competitively different. We're going to be going over the parts and theory and essence of a mission statement for the balance of our curriculum. And it will evolve and change as we go through the, uh, our curriculum. But we can always look at the objective of a mission statement to function as a compass. And I've got a little compass here. And so a mission statement, a where a compass <clears throat> has a dial on it, and there are 360 degrees in a compass dial. In theory, we could say, okay, let's say there's 360 degrees in the economy, which we use the SIC code system or the North American classification code system to define, in theory, all the degrees that make up the economy. Every degree will have an SIC code number, if you will. And so once we understand <clears throat> what we're selling to whom we're selling, we should be able to look, look it up and, and, and get a sense of where we're going in the economy. And we use the second sentence, what makes us competitively different, to actually then try to get a feel for how, you know, and we're going to talk about vision of success statements in a bit, you know, how high are we aiming in the economy. So our, our mission statement, <clears throat> remember, it has nothing to do with the size of the business or the financial goals of the business. A mission statement is valid whether you're a one-person firm or a 500-person firm. But the mission statement merely indicates which direction we're going in the economy and what makes us competitively different. And we use the, the compass here to symbolize that. We can also look at um, the mission statement as the foundation for our vision of success statement. So our mission statement, in a way, is our vehicle to uh, get to the vision of success. And our vision of success statement is the foundation for our organizational structure. Division of labor leads to specialization, leads to increased output, which in turn is the foundation of our phase as a competitive development because we have to know what we're going to build before we can design phases to build it. So in essence, the mission statement touches on these four other aspects of the business plan. An important note to make here regarding this, uh, and this looks very much like, and we'll talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, later on in our curriculum, but one of the things that makes this diagram special is that businesses that develop and implement a business plan statistically earn 10 times more in profit than firms that don't. 
And there are four reasons why businesses that develop and implement a business plan earn 10 times more in profit. And you're looking at it. They've developed a mission statement. They've developed a vision of success statement. They have developed a organizational structure. Division of labor leads to specialization, leads to increased output. And they've developed phases of competitive development. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you can't eat an elephant with one bite. And so the mission statement is the foundation for these four other aspects of a business plan that are essential to tap or discover the magic of business. And that's the exponential growth curve, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, too. So the next section of the business plan or the business plan development process is the development and documentation of our company history or the embracing of our company history. You know, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to you have to have a lot of self love. You have to you have to really understand uh, the story of your life. You you have to you uh, remember people buy you first and what you're selling second. We're a social animal. We have to master the art of ex sharing with others as very briefly. Um, our life story, or who are we? Where, where have we come from? Where are we going? So from that standpoint, the process of developing our company history helps us understand where we've been, where we are, and where we're going, and the alignment between the phases of our life story and our phases of competitive development. There should be a trajectory wise a seamless connection between the phases of life we've been through and our phases of competitive development. Logically, they should connect from where we've been, who we are, and where, where we're going. And again, the company history is the foundation for the entire plan, the uh, uh, entire uh, uh, entrepreneurial objective. The company history is the foundation for your entire business plan. Everything about your life story must align with your business plan. I got a little diagram up here that's, um, these are often called bar charts or histogram charts. But if we take a look at it from the standpoint of uh, phases, as I was mentioning earlier, phases of your life, and then time now, and then phases of your competitive strategy, when you look at where you've been and where you're going graphically like this, we can really see the importance of, of having a company history that integrates with our phases of competitive development. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, and, and I'll mention all the way through our curriculum, it's all about alignment. It's all about alignment. And, and the, the more we can uh, align where we've been with where we're going, the more it's a natural progression, projection of our life story, of our life. And that's when we get... And, and tap and understand the sense of destiny, the sense of destiny and what we're trying to do with this, this entire process. And once you find that, by the way, once you can find and figure out and, and, and align your mission statement with the mindset, this is my destiny, especially with a, a linked up with our vision of success, our destiny is to execute this mission statement to achieve our vision of success statement. And when we have that mindset, boy, nothing can stop us. And, and so that's why this stuff is so important. Um, this, this diagram to me is my favorite of all my lecture art, pieces of art. <laughs> I had to put it this way. To me, this says it all. It's got the story of your life and all the little, you know, uh, benchmark uh, data points where something significant has happened in terms of um, uh, your life story. And, and I don't want to get mathy, but we could, you know, almost look at this from a statistical standpoint and say, call it a regression uh, analysis or a, reg uh, a multiple regression analysis, if you will, but a regression analysis of just getting a feel of where I've been and where I'm going. And if we could draw a straight line through all those dots there, that in essence is your mission statement. It's, it, 
this is your life story has prepared you to sell a particular product and service to a particular person and differentiate yourself in, in the marketplace in a certain way. Little sidebar note, and as I've mentioned many times in other, other lectures or and we'll be talking about in lectures going through our series, a life plan and a business plan are absolutely interchangeable. There's no difference between the two. The same sections uh, for both types of plan occur, a, a mission statement, vision, organizational structure. Organizational structure from a life standpoint symbolizes uh, disciplines, bodies of knowledge you have to master to execute, again, your mission statement to achieve your vision of success statement. But if you think about separate bodies of knowledge that you have to master, that's, there's no different than having each department uh, in an org structure is bodies of knowledge within an organization. So again, we still have to understand and master bodies of knowledge from an entrepreneurial business standpoint. We call those, you know, uh, and we'll get into these mechanical sections, uh, but how each department functions, um, as well as uh, how uh, uh, the infrastructure of knowledge for each body of knowledge to execute your mission statement to achieve your vision of success statement. Um, you also can see the um, exponential growth curve, and that's the magic of business. If we've, if we, if we've done it right, and we have a section on, on mission statement later on, I mean, that's, it, that's focused 100% on, on, on developing a mission statement. But if we do it right, about two years into the execution of the business plan, Statistically speaking, that's where we experience the exponential growth curve. If we've developed infrastructure over time and managed all the aspects of the infrastructure of the business uh, to where we can delegate, to where we can now start to back out of the business, work on the business and not in the business, while at the same time preaching to the marketplace our mission statement. What are we selling? To whom we're selling? And what makes us competitively different? That's where the magic of business kicks in. And, and that's where we experience exponential growth curve. Now we're going to get into what's called the, um, sometimes we call these the theoretical sections of the business plan. Uh, sometimes we call them the economic sections of the business plan. But in essence, it's the, we'll just say it's the theoretical, or the theory of the business plan, uh, the, of, of the theory of, of, of what we're basing the business, our, our model of our business upon. The first section in this body, this group of section, sections, is called the industry analysis. And I think <clears throat> that was one of the final exam uh, potential questions, but you know, what is the objective of the industry analysis? And the objective of the industry analysis is to explain how your industry works on, in the, of the entire nation. Anywhere in the nation or any country, <clears throat> in essence, how does the industry work? How does it produce its goods and services to whom you're selling your products and, and services to? So we usually, um, so we have to explain um, how, how it's done, um, uh, how the service is delivered, how the product is manufactured, um, or how both are integrated together to make that happen. So we're going to teach you some tricks, uh, or give an overview of some tricks on how to do that. There are four parts of an industry analysis. And the first part is um, uh, an introduction to the industry. And over the years, I've developed uh, this particular graph diagram that very can be used in any industry to explain how the industry works in theory. And what makes this special is that um, if we take a look at this, the, the, uh, the structure of this, that and I'm going to explain in a minute, but, but we can see actually the uh, general ledger chart of accounts, the accounting equation, the income statement is staring you straight in the face right now. And so let me explain what I mean by that. And, and as we go through our curriculum, you know, there's general to specific. We start off with a theory, the mission statement, and we end up with 
spreadsheets and cash flow projections and things like that at the back end. And again, it's all about alignment. It all has to connect with each other as we go through this process. Um, so you're, you're getting, we're setting the scene to actually start introducing you as well as our reader into the financial aspects of our business. So all the boxes on the top of this diagram represent the, our vendors. And our vendors from a um, uh, an accounting standpoint are the people that we would refer to as direct cost of sales accounts, direct cost of sales accounts. Um, we'd call these f uh, number five accounts or five accounts, five, five, fifty, five hundred, but all these uh, accounting uh, general ledger accounts would start with a five. And we'll get into all that stuff when we get into the financial section of the business plan several videos from here. And the next part of our um, <clears throat> uh, how we explain our industry deals with our overhead management, uh, labor, staff, um, uh, all our, our internal company resources, consulting personnel, um, investors, etc. And so these particular are our direct costs of sales. Now, this, this next slide, and I think I've got an example here. Okay, so, so this, is, this is a Pyrex club. Think of it as a, as a beaker. So if we put management and staff and investors and consultants and all the goods and services that our, our vendors provide, and we mix it up, okay, in terms of a manufacturing process or a consulting process, we can now, you know, take, and, and this, this symbolizes our industry uh, and, and all the things we as an entrepreneur have to put into this speaker to mix it up to create um, our profit centers. And so if we take in the next slide here um, is our industry profit centers and what should spill out of this beaker is, you know, it's just like, it's like pouring, you know, um, uh, you know, revenue, if you will, but is our revenue accounts or our profit centers. Um, and now we're going to spill the, 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 the fruits, the efforts of our, of our, of our business into these profit centers. So this is an excellent diagram and we'll spend more time when we go over, uh, when we have our lecture on how to do an industry analysis, but it's an excellent diagram to explain how an industry works. The next objective of a business of, a, of our industry analysis is to introduce the economic size of the industries and, and here's where we're going to get into um, uh, uh, business uh, 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 business research organizations such as Standard and Poor's, uh, Hoover's, uh, Dun and Bradstreet, uh, First Research. I find a lot of banks, uh, financial institutions, subscribe to the First uh, Research um, uh, information resource. Uh, something you should know for those of you who are students uh, that. Uh, most of these organizations, if you contact them and let them know that you're a student in an academic program, they will give you any of their uh, research uh, uh, files for free. Uh, often they charge $2,000 or three or $4,000 a year as a license to download these documents. So know that if you contact them as a student, and here at UCLA, just remember you also have um, access to the Anderson Business School Library uh, to um, access this information. But anyway, um, you, once you understand, once you find your SIC code or your, uh, your North American Industry Classification Code, next thing we do is we go to uh, these organizations and we look for economic industry to, in information to profile the economic size of the industry. Another t important thing too is these um, research uh, organizations have fabulous profiling uh, information on your industry, as well as historical information, uh, how did the industry got started, how old it is, technology and things of that sort. So finding information on your industry through Standard & Poor's or Dun & Bad, <laughs> listen to me, Dun & Bradstreet is just absolutely essential for uh, your own education, but to fully understand the history, the size, uh, and profile of your industry.
Um, our next objective in developing uh, industry analysis is understanding um, the historic cycles of the industry. And, and the reason why this is important is because at some point we're going to have to do a cash flow analysis. So we have to understand what are the peaks and valleys that are historically associated with your industry. So this is a funny little cartoon. It's got a bunch of Santa Clauses uh, in an employment line and uh, the reception is saying I'm, uh, saying, I'm sorry, sir, but we only have uh, vacancies for Easter bunnies. So, you know, another example of this might be, let's say you're, you have bicycles, a bicycle manufacturing business, uh, or a bicycle retail business. Well, obviously, you're going to have higher sales in summer than you're going to have in the winter. So who wants to go riding their bicycle when it's freezing cold and there's snow on the ground? Uh, so we want nice, dry weather for bicycle riding. Same thing with Christmas trees. I mean, we're going to buy Christmas trees in December. So just it makes sense. So we have to be aware of the cycles associated with our industry. The final uh, section of our industry analysis is our industry economic forecast. And this is, you know, uh, where's the industry going, you know, in, in the future? And again, we can get this information with Dun & Bradstreet and Standard & Poor's. However, where I found another essential place to find this information are professional trade journals. Usually the January, December or the June, July issue of a professional trade journal has articles written by PhDs that specialize in your particular industry that give some kind of forecast on where it's, it's going. The fourth section of the uh, business plan is our market analysis section. And the market analysis deals with the point of entry into the industry. So we've got a magnifying glass. Now we're going to focus and study Los Angeles, for example, uh, for or where are we looking at uh, in the graph here? It looks like you know Santa Fe, New Mexico. But but in this case, we want to take our point and really study the you know the demographics, supply and demand, and things like that at the point of entry into the industry. There are four parts to an a market analysis. And the first is profiling our market region. We usually use some kind of map to do this, and we will also have a paragraph or two on demographics uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, market infrastructure, demographics, age, households, uh, profiling the number of people per household, children, adults, university, educated, non-educated, men to women, children. So just we want to profile uh, the point of entry of the industry. <clears throat> and then the next thing is going to be we want to our, uh, profile our, our, our customer. And going back to our mission statement, what are we selling? To whom we're selling? This is where we're going to get into the, the psychographics of who we're selling to. The person who makes the decision in terms of buying your goods and services. And a little, a little sidebar note here. Uh, all the most successful entrepreneurs that have uh, come out of this curriculum that, uh, that I've observed uh, uh, achieving success in, in their ventures. Know their customer like the back of their hand. They, they know how they're going to make decisions before they even make the decision. So this is an important aspect of, of mastering entrepreneurship, uh, the, uh, being successful in your business, is knowing your customer like the back of your hand. One of the leading reasons why businesses fail, they really don't understand their customer. They've got an idea, they're passionate about what they're making and what they're selling, but they really don't know how to communicate uh, what they're selling, to whom they're selling, and what makes them competitively different to their customer. And if you don't have that handshake, that connection there, as a business, you're just not going to get the first base. And no matter how hard you work, it's like trying to you know, push mud uphill. It's just, just not going to happen. So here's where we really dig down and profile the um, psychographic norms of the person we're selling to. 
Uh, next, we're going to profile our competitors, and we have a whole section on this where we will show you how to develop what's called a competitor comparison table. But we truly have to understand our competitor in order to understand our position in the marketplace, um, our, our strengths, our weaknesses, our, the threats and opportunities that are facing us uh, to get into the marketplace. Next in final part of our market analysis section is to profile our market position and again this is where we do a SWOT analysis on our, our market position. Okay, so the next sections of a business plan, and they're both just one page sections, is our competitive resources section and our market opportunity section. Why these two sections are so valuable in this whole business plan development process as well as business uh, model presentation process is that these two sections summarize the company history, the industry analysis and the market analysis with just two one-page sections that have bullet word points. So each of the bullet words from the standpoint of our competitive resource has to draw back and come from the, competitive, uh, the, uh, the company history which, by the way, starts off as a biography for most emerging businesses, and then we tr we transform that into a company history. And we have a whole section that explains how to do that later on in our curriculum. But uh, the our competitive resources, we have to see where they come from, but we also have to see how they align with our industry as well as our market. So, like for instance, a little side thing: I, I finished my MBA up at uh, Boston University. And I lived in Boston for a year. And um, with my name being Harry, in Boston, if you couldn't, you know, um, so my name in Boston is pronounced Howie. And, uh, but, if, but if you don't master the accent, you know, Pak de Khan Havit Square, that just walking in the door, it's a disadvantage. So sometimes in certain types of industries, in certain markets, you've got to be a product of that industry. You've got you've to have the accent. You've got you know, you've, you've to have paid your dues to earn entry, <coughs> uh, earn entry into the, um, the marketplace. Even if you know the industry, you still have to know the market and you have to bond with the people in the market. So we have to see a connection between where we've come from and then how does that connect with the, the knowledge uh, of the industry and the people who make the industry tick and these are what we're going to call competitive resources. Market opportunities, market opportunities are a little different. We want to now enumerate all the areas where there's more demand than there is supply. That's what we call an opportunity. A market opportunity is where there's more demand than there is supply. And of course, that should fall underneath the umbrella of our mission statement. Um, and so, uh, these again, these are just two-page sections, but they're important because the essence of our, our website, our brochure, our elevator sales pitch is going to spawn in one way or the other from the bullet words in these two sections. The next section, or the sixth step in a 10-step process of developing a business plan, is developing our competitive strategy. Before we get into developing the competitive strategy, I want to take a moment to talk about one of my um, favorite athletic coaches, uh, as well as authors, uh, Rick Pitino, who wrote the book, Success is a Choice. And the reason why I want to talk about this right now is when we develop strategy, our, our game plan, reality is when we finally get to the starting line of the business and the gun goes off and, and, and we start executing our phases of competitive development, things change. Things will change. But by going through this process of developing the, our internal uh, uh, management strategy, our external market strategy, and all the subcategories of those strategies, uh, we develop um, processes, routines, uh, uh, and we have to 
as an entrepreneur, master these uh, theories and concepts like a, a tacticianer. And and so when we when we look at <clears throat> There's, there's an important mindset to get across to all of you that success is a choice. It's not just luck. It's not just being at the right place at the right time. Um, we have to develop a training program so we can deserve victory. And that starts with the strategic planning st sections, uh, so the, all the sections that make up our competitive strategy. We have to understand every little aspect of this because when things start to change, we can go with the flow, just like a basketball player. We have a, a Marquette basketball player. I mean, look at the expression on his face. I mean, he's focused. And if the ball goes this way or that way, he's still going to respond appropriately to achieve his offensive or defensive objective. But this all starts with establishing your competitive strategy and then, and then going over it, each aspect over and over and over and over again, just like an athlete training for what if the, what if the play goes this way or that way, a football game or a basketball or lacrosse or whatever it may be. But if we train to respond, react, uh, without, we don't even think, we just do it. Um, uh, we're going to be better prepared to initiate the, the, business, uh, the uh, entrepreneurial process. This is kind of a neat circular graphic diagram, and I, and, and I just want is so on one side, we have um, our uh, external market strategy, all the things that are going on in the external aspect of, of, of our industry or market. And then we have our internal management strategy, how we're going to lead our company. So this is very important mindset. That reason why is because we, whatever we do on the inside, it should be aligned and in balance with what's going on on the outside. So our internal market, str our, our management strategy, has to be cued into, in balance with, aligned with our external market development strategy. And it's very important you see this. Another reason why this is important is because you as an entrepreneur, you're developing personally inside of you. Uh, you are mastering this whole thing called entrepreneurship. So as the business grows, you as a person have to grow with it too. So this is why it's important, and we'll talk about this later on in our curriculum, but this is why it's important to develop a personal development plan in conjunction with your business plan, strategically speaking, so as the business grows, so does your level of maturity. So does your understanding of how to uh, perceive yourself and project yourself as the CEO of your business. Um, because if you don't, uh, your business can grow past y your own maturity and that's going to sow the seeds for failure at some point. So let's take this diagram <clears throat> and break it in down into this diagram, which is a little bit easier to see and understand. And I want to, because um, if we take a look and say, well, what is strategy? Well, strategy in a nutshell is, what are we going to do first, second, third? It's a plan. It's it's a schedule of events, and that it is. And we down, we can look down here under management strategy. We have phases of competitive development, and that's where we're going to in you know our plan. What are we going to do first, second, third internally to achieve our vision of success, external vision of success strategy or goals? And um, but I think one of the things I want to emphasize before I go through the six strategies that make up a competitive strategy. That strategy has much to do with this, the culture and theory of the business. So this goes back to Rick Bettino's book, Success is a Choice. Your strategy is a culture. It's a mindset. It's an aura. You can, everyone around you can seize it and understand it. It is your game plan. It's something that we're constantly rehearsing, planning, practicing, um, memorizing. So let's kind of keep that in the back of our mind as we go through uh, the, uh, our, our six competitive strategy sections. So first, um, so we have our, our, our competitive strategy, our external market strategy, and our management strategy. 
Um, and so here we're going to talk about now the, our market niche strategy. And we have a whole section, a whole video on this. But for just for right now, just to kind of explain what it is, here's where we narratively describe how we're going to execute the mission statement to build the infrastructure to achieve the vision of success statement. And, uh, and we introduce much information on that going into the business plan development process. But here's where we, in essence, this describes in detail what the mission statement interlaced with the vision of success statement are all about. And that's what makes this particular part of the business plan uh, so dynamic and, uh, you, um, and special. Next is our price strategy. And our price strategy is um, just says where our price comes from. It can be done in one sentence, but there's a lot of work uh, to figure out how that comes about. And so, you know, you could have a high price, low volume, uh, or a, uh, a low price, high volume, or a competitive bid, or something like that. But we have to explain where price comes from. But this gets into supply and demand model, and market equilibrium, and short run, long run economic models. And we're gonna, we have a whole section that talks about that. But this is where we establish how we come up with price for our business that aligns with our mission statement, et cetera. Next is our market position strategy. And this is all about competition. This is all about how we're going to get in the market, how we're going to raise barriers of entry, how we're going to capture market share, how we're going to deal with competitors. Uh, and we talk about various different market position strategies from the standpoint of offender, defender, guerrilla warfare, etc. Um, on the internal side, uh, the first one uh, strategy we have here is our corporate culture strategy. And most businesses nor entrepreneurs really take the time to understand that. And it's probably the most valuable and powerful aspect of a business plan and or of the mindset that an entrepreneur wants to have going into this whole process because our corporate culture, again, is, a pre, uh, is, is something that even if we don't define it, we still have an aura of it. We still project it. <clears throat> and the better we understand and our corporate culture, uh, the, the, the more effectively we will be in empowering others to execute the mission statement to achieve the vision of success statement. Um, our next uh, uh, strategy here is our vision of success strategy. And here we get into uh, you know, brain psychology and the power of imagery and, and the power of having certain types of images around the, the company and the use of imagery in our business plan, in our PowerPoint presentations, et cetera. But uh, taking our vision of success and having images graphically as well as narratively establishing the goals that we are setting to achieve as a business, as a team, as a culture, as an organization um, is a very important part. And if we don't do it, we won't, we won't be working towards a goal. If we don't know where we're going, we won't know when we get there. Um, and so this spawns from our vision of success statement, which we talked about earlier. And then our final strategy here is our, our phases of competitive development. And, and again, um, we have a whole section on that. And this is, uses scheduling technique, uh, bar charts, critical path method, histograms. And uh, so we do this both graphically and narratively in explaining our phases of how we're going to work our way into the marketplace. But just the most important thing to understand right now is um, you know, building a building and building a business have much in common with each other. They're both, uh, both very technical environments. Uh, to build a building, you have to have a foundation before a frame, a frame before a roof, a roof before you can put mechanical systems in there and, and electrical systems and uh, carpet, drywall, and all that kind of stuff. And the same thing with a, with a business. There's, there, uh, there is a 
logical process of stepping into an industry to avoid failure. Um, and as we've talked in many of the videos that 80-90% uh, of all businesses will fail within the first two and a half years of going into business. And, uh, and, and we, throughout our curriculum, we talk about the, the, the reasons why. And, um, and so the, the more we understand our phases of competitive development going into this process, uh, the more likely we are to survive the process. This is called a phases of competitive development worksheet. <clears throat> and a phase of competitive development worksheet integrates our organizational structure, which we're going to be talking next, but, uh, but it's where we have our division of labor. Uh, and then on the side, we have our phases of competitive development. And so this integrates the two together, and we use this uh, to prepare ourselves for developing what we call our mechanical sections, which we're going to be talking about next. So we take each one of those boxes, and we put a little bullet word in, in, ter uh, in terms of what we need to develop and achieve for each department for each phase. And when, when we develop a phase of competitive development worksheet, we truly understand our business like the back of our hand. And so mastering this aspect of the business plan uh, development process is an essential step in the whole process. No one will question your ability to start and launch your business if you take the time to develop one of these worksheets. And when we do everything right, uh, this is the magic of business where we have an exponential growth curve uh, about phase three or four in terms it's usually about two years into to the process where we really start to take, take, take off. Now we're, is we're going to get into the what we call the mechanical sections of the business plan, and this is the nuts and bolts. It's where the rubber hits the asphalt, if you will. So this deals with you know the um, procedure manuals. <clears throat> These are little mini business plans for each department of the company, and um, and again uh, by when we understand the theory of the business and <clears throat> the phases by which we're going to build the business. Now we're going to come and apply these phases to each functional division of labor, such as administration, uh, marketing, sales, bookkeeping, etc. Uh, and so here's where we're going to outline um, how to develop each one, each division of labor of the business. Why this is important, and this next, this next slide up here, and this is what we call the law of organizational theory. By the way, that is a question on our uh, final exam. Division of labor leads to specialization, uh, which leads to increased output and profits. And this is established by Adam Smith. And we'll talk more about that later on in our curriculum. But you know, test after test, example after example, whenever we divide labor and allow it to specialize to a job description, uh, and, and, then, and then organize that with some kind of infrastructure, organizational structure, or an assembly line, or something along that the sorts, uh, we go from producing you know 25 units uh, per day to 250 units per day. It's really an, uh, an amazing phenomena, and this also is where we get the exponential growth curve when we finally and fully understand this. The next step in the business plan development process is the development of our organizational structure. And, and this is where we actually show the divisions of labor and, 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 and how they group in specialized departments. A good mindset to have when you develop your organizational structure for your organization is the human body. So in the human body, we have brain, we have eyes, we have heart, we have lungs, kidneys, livers, intestines, etc. 
these are all departments, if you will. They're functional divisions of labor. They have specific job assignments or uh, department descriptions. And if any one organ goes down, well, the whole show goes down. If your heart starts stops beating, you're you've done. If your lungs stop working, you're done. If your liver stops functioning or kidneys, you're you're done. If your digestive system stops working, etc. So, um, and then within each one, there's many things that go on. There's different job titles, if you will, that like in the heart, there's valves and there's muscles and things like that. So in a funny way, there's, there's division of labor even within each of these departments. So not only can we have an organizational structure for the entire company, but we can have an organizational structure for administration or accounting and bookkeeping, uh, marketing, sales, uh, sales, et cetera. And, um, and so uh, uh, developing an organizational structure is an, uh, an essential part of, of a business plan. Next is our financial sections of the business plan. And here we have... Um, our funding needs, our cash flow projection, and financial statements. And so these three documents make up the financial aspects of a, of a business plan. First is our funding needs, and here's where we have to you know, outline how much money's got to go out before money starts to come back in. So, uh, so we basically take our... Um, organizational structure and and outline per our organizational structure uh, the startup funding needs and capitalization buying equipment or inventory and things of this sort necessary to uh, put all the minimum parts of the business together to bring life to the business. It's very much like, you know, Dr. Frankenstein building Frank. How much money is going to cost to build Frank before it, it can be injected with capital and start walking around by itself um, and, uh, uh, and, and making an income and, 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 and bringing profit and revenues back, back, back to you, the, uh, uh, the person who created Frank. So how much money is going to cost to develop this organization uh, to uh, get to our break-even point where it's starting to grow and, and pay its bills. Next is a cash flow projection. And we're going to spend a lot of time in here on how to develop a cash flow projection worksheet. And what makes this particular approach uh, special is if you notice across the top, there's, there's a, a bar chart. Th that, those bars symbolize your phases of competitive development. And in the balance of the business plan, we put a lot of time into explaining what each department's going to do for each phase. So it's very easy to understand where the business theory, in theory, will be at each phase in terms of its marketing plan, its internal development, how much money's going out, um, a reinvestment, and we should have a pretty good idea of what our cash flow is going to be month by month, year by year, for a three to four, a, a three to five year period. And we'll talk much on how to work with Excel spreadsheets and developing a cash flow projection. Uh, last but not least is uh, the a, a projection of financial statements, and um, and we're going to at this point introduce to you the accounting equation, which we all have to memorize. And, and, how, and how the balance sheet and income statement come from the structure of the accounting equation. And th this is an essential aspect of understanding the th language of, of business. Uh, and because th if we don't understand the accounting equation and the parts that make up the accounting equation, it's going to be pretty hard to talk to banks and accountants and bookkeepers and things of that sort. So there's an overview of our of the 10 step process of developing a business plan and we're going to spend the rest of our curriculum uh, drilling down on each one of these sections. I can't wait to get started.